Okay guys, are you ready to make a really awesome text animation? Today I'm gonna to show you how to create this uh, outline text animation that kind of has a some glowing colored spectrum rays coming through. And after showing you the basics of how to set up the anima this animation, we're gonna do something really fun. I'm gonna take a node that I have not used in a very long time. Actually, I haven't used it probably since I really first started trying to learn how to use Fusion. Um, I'm gonna take it and apply it and see if we can take this effect maybe, you know, everybody says next level, but maybe this will be next level, bringing a, uh, kind of a node out of the graveyard that I'd kind of completely forgotten about and see if we can make some really interesting effects with it. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna be making this outline text gradient uh, rays animation. To make the outline text animation, we're gonna use the text node from the shape subsystem. And this is really important because it's gonna allow us to create that animated outline effect. Um, it's super easy to do. Let's get started. Um, let's right click in the node area and hit control space and search for S text. We'll add that in and let's set up our text. Let's say resolve. Let's put that in the viewer and adjust the font. Um, so let's uh, let's start setting up this animation. We're going to put a background node in here and put that into the media out. And we're gonna take the background alpha and bring it all the way down to zeros because we don't need a background for this part. Um, now we can't, the uh, output of this text, typically you would, a uh, node, you can merge it on top of another node, but this is not gonna work because we, we're gonna need a render node to get the shape into the main node flow. So let's uh, move this over and we're gonna hit control space and search for S render. And that's gonna take whatever's in the shape nodes and put it out so that we can take the output of the S render and drag it right on top of the background and it's gonna create a merge node for us. Let's look at the media out. And there we go, we have our text merged up on top of our background. We're gonna use an outline effect on this animation. So we're gonna use the outline node to do that. Click in the node area, hit control space and search for S outline. This is the shape outline node. Let's take the output of the text and put it into this yellow input on the outline and put that in the viewer. And there we go, let's, uh, let's make the text a little bit bigger. Go back to the outline, and this is where we can adjust the outline thickness. You can adjust the length and position to create the right on effect. We'll go to the very first frame and we're gonna keyframe the length at zero. And let's go over 20 frames and set the length to one. So basically the length is gonna draw on over 20 frames. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe the position. Let's go to a zero here and we'll go to 20 frames, and we're gonna move the position just a little bit. So the position is gonna be moving along with the length. Now let's take the outline and we're gonna merge it on top of this background. So what we have is hit control space and search for S render, and we'll put the outline into the render, and then the render can be merged on top of our background. Take a look at the animation. We, you can see that we have the outline drawing on and the text below it. Let's have the solid text kind of fade in. So the um, animation was about 20 frames. So let's go to about to frame 10 and we're on merge one and we're gonna take the blend and bring it bring it down. So all we see is the outline. Hit a keyframe and we'll go over to, let's say frame, uh, let's go over to, let's say frame 40. And we're gonna take the blend and take it to one. Let's see what we have now. We have the outline coming in and then you can see the text fades in to make the um, text solid. All right, you'll see that when we're on, we're on the first frame, you see that um, our outline starts with these little dots. Um, there's a couple ways to fix that. We can click this option here to change the end cap to flat. It just kind of pops on right there when it starts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this fade in. So let's put the end cap back. Gonna go to frame zero and the merge down here for the outline. Gonna take the blend down to zero. And we'll go over just a few frames, maybe uh, six frames and eight frames and bring it to one. Okay, so now we have it animating on, we wanna be able to animate it off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a really cool trick with the time speed node to take the animation that we use in the beginning of the video, or the beginning of the clip, and actually reverse it out at the end of the clip. So that, that way we only have to keyframe it once and it's gonna be great for the beginning and end. It's gonna fade in and fade out. So click in the node area, hit control space and search for time speed. And we're gonna take the uh, this merge and put it into the time speed here. And you'll see that uh, it's basically not doing much, but when we go to the time speed, we're gonna set the speed to minus one. And that's gonna reverse the animation for us. So now you see, let's go ahead and put uh, merge one in the first frame. This is the beginning. And the time speed is we're gonna put that in the second frame and that's gonna be the end of the animation. So I'm gonna to go to frame zero and you'll see the merge one is showing us animate in. And then check out the second one over here, the second viewer. And at the very end of the animation, it's gonna automatically fade out. Also, don't forget to check out my SparkFX toolkit. It's got a lot of workflow optimizations, plugins, all sorts of great tools and things you can use to make your editing a lot easier in DaVinci Resolve. Um, there's a link down below. Check it out, give it a try, and let me know what you think. Okay, so we have our in animation, which is this merge, and the out animation, which is the time speed. Click in the node area, hit control space, and search for dissolve. 
And we're going to use the dissolve node to flip which animation we're looking at. Holding shift, we're going to drag the uh, dissolve right on top of the node flow. It's going to connect that line up here. And we're going to take the time speed and put it into the foreground of the dissolve. So now what we can do is we can adjust the foreground background property on the dissolve node to choose which animation we want to see. So we're going to play the play right there. I'm going to go ahead and put everything in one viewer now to simplify it. And here we want to use the background. So let's slide this over to background in the very beginning of the animation. And once everything is faded in, go to right about that frame right here, click on the dissolve, keyframe the foreground background, go over one frame, and then we're going to flip it from the background to the foreground. So now at the end of the animation, it's going to automatically animate out. And you see when we go back to the timeline here, the great thing here is we can take our composition and stretch it out. And the end animation is automatically going to be tied to however long we stretch it. So we can adjust our timing and it's still going to animate out just the way we want it. So now that we have the basic text animation with the outline, let's add the, in the really cool um, kind of ra color raise effect. Um, so we're going to use a couple nodes to do this. Let's move this over here. Right click in the node area and search for raise. And we're going to take the output of the dissolve and put it into the raise. And let's take a look at what we have. All right, that's looking pretty good here. And we're going to go ahead and set the threshold to one or threshold to zero, so that it's going to include everything all the time. So let's we'll adjust some of the ray properties. You can uh, adjust the decay, the weight, but however long you want your rays to go, that's what these properties are going to help you with. Okay, so you notice that there's this center position here, and we want this to animate across it to have the rays kind of um, changing as the animation draws on. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the center property and choose modify with XY path. And that's going to add a modifier that's going to allow us to just change one of the XY parts. So we're going to go to modifiers, click this tab, and uncheck these keyframe things. And now we can take this X property and move it like this. So we can directly animate this one specific part of the position. So let's right click on the X and we're going to say modify with anim curves. And what anim curves does is it automatically sets an, anim an animation that animates throughout the full duration of the video. So we're going to make sure this source is set to duration. And you'll see that the this point right here starts on the left and it goes all the way across throughout their animation, all the way from the beginning to the end. You may want to adjust this because you have different words or different links. What we're going to do to do this is use the offset and scale. So let's move the offset. That's going to be the offset of our animation. You see that green line there? So the offset, that means the animation is going to start right here based on this offset. This offset is where it starts. And the scale is how far it goes. So we're going to take the scale and bring it down. You notice we're making that green line a little bit shorter. So it's going to animate from the beginning of this line to the end throughout the length of our composition. And that is how we kind of animate the rays to kind of create the shine through effect. There's a way too many rays on this thing. Um, I want to kind of tone it down a little bit and we're going to use a mask to do this. So right on top of the rays, you'll see there's this little blue mask here and we're going to take this ellipse and we're going to take the ellipse and drop it right in. And it's going to only show the rays inside of this ellipse area. So we, this allows us to get a little bit more control. Um, so we'll put it like right in here and we're going to do the soft edge to kind of fade it a little bit. So now when we move this mask, you can see that it's only going to have the rays where the mask is. Um, now we want this mask to follow the direction of the rays. We're going to use an expression to do this. So we're going to right click on the center property of the mask and choose expression. And this is real simple. You just type in rays one, which is the name of a rays node dot center. And now the ellipse is going to follow the center of where the rays are. I just want this to go a little faster. So let's uh, click on this and we're going to take the uh, length and bring it down. Let's go back into Fusion by clicking this icon here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the rays and we will eventually merge them on top of here so that we can use them. But now we're going to add the color splash. So right click in the node area, hit control space and search for background. And we're going to set up a spectrum gradient. All right, so click on the background background type. We're going to select, select gradient. We're going to go through and click in the gradient area and set the color for each of the gradient stops. Uh, just to kind of make a nice spectrum, it can be really whatever you want to use. And let's put this in the viewer. All right, we got a great spectrum gradient, and we want this gradient to only show up where our text with rays are. So we're going to use the mask input on the background. So let's take a look at the, this is what our rays look like. And we're going to use this as a mask on the background. So the background's only going to show up where you see parts of that. Let's take the output of the rays and put it into the background and put it on the viewer. All right, check that out. Okay, now we have kind of the drawn, you can see it in color now. So we're going to kind of merge these things together. And the node that really helps sell this is the edge detect node. That's going to really take this effect to the next level. Let's keep on moving this over. We're going to right click in the node area and search for edge detect. 
take the output of the background and put that into the edge detect and let's take a look at what we got. And we can adjust some of these settings for edge width to kind of create, to customize, kind of, to customize the effect for us. Lots of different options in here. And then we're going to take the output of the edge detect and put it right into the dissolve. Now, you notice the edge detect has all this black in it. Go to the merge and we're going to set the blend mode to screen. And that's going to take a lot of that black out for us. And then the other thing we're going to do is go to the edge detect and check um, edge mask overlay. And it's going to take a little bit more out. So we're only going to see where the edge, the edge is. And we've got a great looking animation right there. And it animates out. And this is where we could kind of fade it out at the end if we needed to. Okay, if you want to learn more about Fusion, DaVinci Resolve, editing, creating animations, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and as always, um, yeah, definitely like the video and comment below. Let me know what you think. Like the video. Okay, so pretty simple animation. Um, now we're going to take this thing to the next level. We're going to bring an old node that I used a long time ago. We're bringing it out of retirement. We're bringing it back to maybe create a really, really interesting effect. And if you hadn't guessed it, the node is the plasma node. Um, I actually had a plasma text um, animation I did a really long time ago when I was trying to learn how to use Fusion. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. Um, but we're going to use some of the same techniques in this one, maybe even do a little bit more to create a really great effect. Um, so click in the node area and hit control space and search for plasma. And let's put that in the viewer to see what it looks like. So basically you just get these really interesting, um, interesting kind of circle shapes with kind of interacting with each other. Um, we're going to take this and we're going to take the output of the rays. Let's remember what that is. And we're going to stick that into the mask input on the plasma. And you'll see we have this kind of a thing. And then we're going to take the output of the plasma and put it into the mask on the background. And it kind of messes up. You'll kind of see we have some really interesting effects on our um, background. Let's take a look at what it looks like. And we could even maybe even go crazy here. And let's add a glow. I don't, don't want too much. Maybe bring that down a little bit. That's the basic plasma. But we can actually change some settings to make it a lot more interesting. Let's see what we can do. Okay, super quick look at the plasma node so you can kind of understand what's going on. It's really creating these uh, circle patterns and overlaying them so they interact with each other in really interesting ways. You can see when you look at this, it has up to four circles, and we're going to set each of these to none. And you'll see what we have there is this is really what our plasma pattern looks like. And there's type one and type two. Basically, it looks like it just kind of inverts it, and we can adjust the scale. Let's go ahead and do circle two, and we're going to set it to type one, and you can see that they actually start interacting with each other. Change the type up. And you can see that the way the, the circles overlay and interact, we can actually change some th things up. So you can bring the scale down, bring it up, and change some things around. So you can add up to four of these, and they're all going to overlay and interact with each other based on this operation. So we, they can subtract, add. Um, there's a multiply that creates a really interesting effect. You get it right. It's kind of almost like a static -y effect. Each of these plasma things is circles. Um, let's go back to add and adjust this. Um, and we can use these properties to have these circles interact with these other, each other to create some really interesting effects. So I did the plasma here, and I set the, uh, the center to be raised at one. So basically the center of this plasma circle, I'm going to turn all of these off. So we have one circle here, and the center of that circle is going to match the center of the rays. We can adjust the scale. Let's see, actually, yeah, let's turn that one off. Okay, so now we have a complete plasma circle, and let's take a look at the output. And you can see kind of where those plasma rings are. Let's play around with a few of these other properties to see if we can make something really, really interesting. Um, yeah, definitely like the video and comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any ideas, suggestions, or maybe how you would have done what I'm doing a different way. That's the great part about Fusion. There's a million different ways to do the same things and probably always something uh, better and more interesting. So uh, love to hear it. Comment down below. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, I got more videos coming soon. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, like, subscribe, and comment below, and I will talk to you guys really, really soon. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.